Hello, everybody, and Happy New Year. Welcome to this Zoom Hangout with Gaia Vaccine Foundation. I have Amy Moore with me, our technology coordinator. She's going to disappear out of the frame. <laughs> and we have our two guests who are speaking to us from the University of Rhode Island. So we have Dr. Annie DeGroote. Hi, Annie. Hi there. Hello, everyone. She is the founder of Gaia Vaccine Foundation, and she is also a professor of infectious diseases. We also have Julia Nimi. Hi, Julia. She is the project manager for the Gaia Vaccine Foundation. I wanted to remind all our members that this is the second organization that we are funding that is also called Gaia. If you remember, we had the Global AIDS Interfaith Alliance that also did an HIV project, and that was in Malawi. This is Gaia Vaccine Foundation, and this is in Mali. So take it away. Okay, we're gonna um, show you some slides and tell you a little bit about the projects that we're doing in Mali. Uh, so Gaia Vaccine Foundation is a um, organization that started in around 2002, uh, based in Providence, Rhode Island. Our mission is to reduce the incidence of infectious diseases that disproportionately affect the underserved and promote the development of globally relevant, globally accessible vaccines that can be distributed on a not-for-profit basis in the developing world. Um, we're gonna just go through a few programs that we fund in Mali before turning to the program that will be funded by Dining for Women. And so we'll be showing you pictures of some of the people who work at the clinic, as well as some of our patients. This is a picture of the members of the Association of the Community Clinic of Sikoro, also known as the Asa Komsi. And that is a organization that works by running the clinic that provides uh, HIV care. We are the organization that helps them provide the HIV care through our funding. So this group is some, a group we've worked with for more than uh, nearly 15 years, actually. Um, so next slide shows you a little picture. You can get to this on Google Earth. We are the clinic in the unnamed road on the top of the picture. Uh, Bamako is the city that we work in. It's located on the Niger. And we're in one of the poorest communities of Bamako, which is in Mali, one of the poorest countries in the whole world. So we have uh, taken on the, the job of trying to improve the health of the people living in this neighborhood. And one of, we do this in many different ways, and we're gonna talk to you a little bit about that. Meanwhile, here's a picture of some of the patients that we take care of at Hope Center Clinic in Sikoro. Our current programs are focus on five different aspects, sorry, four different aspects. Education, prevention, access to care, and vaccines. And what I mean by that is we want to educate people about the presence of infectious diseases. We want to help people get prevention, uh, prevent those infectious diseases, and we want to improve access to care in their local communities. And we also promote access to vaccines as well as uh, the development of globally relevant, globally accessible vaccines for the future. Um, we have an HIV testing program, and um, so this is important because we want to be able to inform people if they are HIV infected, so we allow people to walk into the Hope Center Clinic if they think they might have HIV testing, and we have a little bit of data. Uh, Julia is going to tell you about the data. So in 2019, so far we've tested over 517 people, uh, about 40 per month. Um, we also have a care program. If you're HIV positive, we take care of you. Uh, we have uh, funding from different organizations to help with that uh, program. We provide um, HIV specialists, pharmacists. We also provide an HIV infectious disease expert and a number of other programs that we'll talk about. Julia? We have about 300 patients enrolled in this program throughout 2019. We also have, um, very importantly, a mother to child transmission prevention program. This is critically important because many women who are HIV infected in Mali uh, do not know that they're HIV infected. And so having access to testing for pregnant women is very important. We need to, them to know that they're HIV infected so they can prevent their children from being infected at birth. While not all, all mothers will transmit HIV to their 
their babies, about a quarter of the moms who are HIV infected will transmit to their babies. So an important way of preventing children from being infected with HIV is to identify the moms, to test the moms, and to offer treatment, which is what we do in the Hope Center Clinic. Um, this program is called Shea Rosalie because as you can see in this picture, there's a, a picture of Rosalie Fain, who helped us start this program in 2005. We'll be, we'll be celebrating the 15th anniversary of the program in uh, 2020. Um, so that's a picture that's actually prominently featured at the clinic. And here are some of the members of the team that actually make the HIV care possible at Hope Center Clinic. We've actually tested quite a few women since the beginning of the Shea Rosalie program. About 20,665 pregnant women have been tested since 2005. And in 2019, Julia, we've had 1,089 women tested so far. So other programs that we also have in place, keep going, uh, include an expansion of this program to a nearby clinic called the Bangladi Clinic. Uh, this is also called Asakoba. Here you see in the center in the white coat, Dr. Mariko, and to her right, Karamoko Tunkara, who is the Gaia director uh, in Mali. Another program that we have that's very important is the Teen Peer edu Education Program. We found out that like canaries in the gold mine, so to speak, teens are frequently the ones that come into our clinic who are newly HIV infected, often in their first sexual experience. So they're pregnant and HIV infected. And this is because of the poverty in the area. So one of the things that we decided to do is to try to educate teens about um, preventing pregnancy, preventing early sexual exposure, and staying in school so that they don't, um, aren't at risk for HIV infection. This very, is a very important program. And we have quite a few women, uh, children, teens going through the program every year. Julia? Over 100 teens attend the program weekly. Um, and in 2019, we had an average of 118 teens each month. So the other thing we do is try, try to pr provide support for the HIV positive community. We do that by supporting a nutrition program that is run by the HIV positive association called Association Espoir at Hope Center Clinic. Here's a picture of the women preparing the, the twice weekly meal for the HIV positive families. This is a key so source of moral support as well as nutrition for the families at the clinic. We served? In 2019, we've served 3,277 meals so far. The other programs that you can uh, see pictured here that we've been involved in were, are also equally important. This project is, that's pictured is what we call the Mother-Daughter Cervical Cancer Prevention Program. It's one of two Gates-funded programs that we've been engaged in. Um, the Gates, uh, Melinda and Bill Gates Foundation gave us money to do some education in the community, to teach people about the, the availability of a cervical cancer vaccine and to get um, people screened for cervical cancer. In this particular program, you can see we designed a cloth uh, that the women are wearing. These are peer educators who went into the community and talked to the community about the availability of HPV vaccine and also the importance of getting tested for cervical cancer, which is one of the number one killers of women in Mali from cancer. Um, we've also funded other programs such as renovating the lab. The next picture shows the beautifully renovated laboratory where uh, people are getting tested. Um, and the labs, lab technicians who are also supported by Gaia Vaccine Foundation um, for doing things like tuberculosis testing at our clinic. Next. What we're doing with um, the funding from Dining for Women, which we're very grateful for, is uh, to start a new program to educate um, mothers and through that their families about the importance of um, programs that are available at the Hope Center Clinic and the Asakoba the two clinics that we work at. Um, this program will focus on HIV transmission from mothers to children and try to get more people into the clinic and get more people tested and get more people aware of testing. 
We do have to approach this in the communities through general education of the women about infectious diseases in order to engage them and engage them to transmit that information within their families so that everyone in their families, including their husbands, knows how to access the care. Um, we'll be doing this by educating peer educators. Here on the right, you see a picture of some women wearing our cervical cancer screening prevention and HPV vaccine cloth uh, funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So we'll be doing something similar to that for uh, the project in January. Um, and our peer educators will be going to the community um, to teach about hope, identity, fidelity, family, and community. Those are five uh, aspects of the program that we'll be teaching. And it's easy to remember those because we'll be using the fingers of the hand as a mnemonic to remind our peer, peer educators what to address in their weekly meetings with local families. Um, they'll be wearing a cloth. Here you can see pictures of the beautiful cloths that people wear in the, the location. And we will also be having the HIV positive uh, members of our uh, association, Espoir, the, the HIV positive association, wear the cloth, as well as we'll be talking about this, the importance of HIV prevention while wearing the cloth in the teen peer education programs. So that's the overall plan, and I'm happy to take any questions that you may have about this. Oh, I forgot to mention that we, we do have expected outcomes, so we'll be measuring the um, amount of knowledge about HIV in the community. We'll try to see if there's an improvement in the knowledge of people in the community about where to go for HIV testing and treatment. We expect that we'll get higher participation in all the guide programs that we offer at the Hope Center Clinic and the Asakoba. And we'll also be printing a textile that will be available in Mali. And we usually have that textile available here in the United States as well um, if people are interested in getting access to it. Mm -hmm. I think that's it for this presentation. And on behalf of everyone at Gaia and our community partners in Mali, thank you very much for your support. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And both of you are sitting right in front of the story clock. So Annie, tell us something about the story clock behind you. Oh, so yes, you can see behind us, we've uh, put the, the cervical cancer and HPV vaccine a story cloth up. This is what we call the storytelling cloth. This is a West African test textile that features not only a, a beautiful picture of the uterus, but also these orange, uh, H scary HIV viruses that are part of the cloth. And a, an important message, you may not be able to see it, but it says, je me soigne, je me protège, je me vaccine. So for this cloth, we were promoting uh, testing, cervical cancer testing, and um, as well as vaccination of girls. With the new cloth, it'll be a new design, which will talk about women and their families, and it will also feature that important idea better to prevent than to cure, which is, uh, can be said in Bambara, the local language, but I don't think that I'll be able to say it to you. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So uh, tell us a little bit more about the typical uh, women that you are meeting who live in these compounds with their families and how this all plays out in the HIV testing. So the area of Bamako that we work in is um, a very crowded area filled with very poor families. In each compound, there may be uh, one man who's sort of in charge of patriarchal society uh, and several wives, uh, usually one to two, sometimes three wives within a compound and all of the children. And um, the way that people usually find out about their HIV infection is they do get, the women get tested when they're pregnant. So they'll come to the clinic out of a concern for the future baby. Our um, midwives will talk to them about the availability of HIV testing and pretty much 100% of the women at our clinic do get tested. But then when they find out that they're HIV infected, it can be a problem because usually it's not they that was the source of the infection, but probably their husband. And in a situation where there are multiple wives, they can actually be at risk of being thrown out onto the street. And that has certainly happened with some of the uh, women in our program. So it's very stigmatizing. We have to be very careful about how we approach it. We definitely honor uh, confidentiality for our patients, but we're also trying to educate people about the importance of testing within the family, that the family should be concerned 
about any infectious disease that's being transmitted in the family and everyone involved, including the man, should get tested and treated at our clinic where treatment is available. And that's an important message that we're trying to pass on. Um, what I, I wanted to mention is that uh, we, this mnemonic that we use, it's uh, easy to remember. So it's identity, uh, sorry, it's hope is the first one. Thumbs up for hope. There is treatment for HIV. The second finger is identity. Uh, you wanna know your, your HIV status. You wanna know your partner's HIV status. The third finger is uh, about how HIV is transmitted through sexual contact. The fourth finger is the family, how important it is within the family to protect against HIV transmission. And the fifth finger is, you know, basically, there are all the people, the community, that provide support for HIV positive. And that's how we fight HIV infection in Bamako and in Mali with this peer education program. Absolutely. Um, in the really little time that we have left, I just wanted you to wrap up with a few comments about your teen program because of the high risk that the teens are in, especially with sugar daddies around. Yes, that's a real problem. Our, the girls in our community are very poor and they are definitely susceptible to getting into risky relationships if they're offered a cell phone or even a telephone card. So our teen peer education program is very important for preventing uh, girls from getting exposed and also keeping them in school. Um, we started this actually because we have uh, an HIV positive peer educator who works with us and she participates in all of those uh, projects. And we're very proud to say that some of the teens that are there today are there because we were doing mother to child transmission prevention and those kids are 15 years old now. So it's wonderful to see the success of the program in, in Siguro. Absolutely. So Annie and Julia, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been a wonderful experience and I believe you must be our first grantee with the story club. And so that <laughs> makes it really, really interesting. Thank you so much. And for our Dining for Women members, before we wrap up, uh, as you know, we always record this uh, several weeks earlier. This is December right now. But I think I can announce to you that uh, there are a few events for you to keep an eye on in March of 2020. Uh, March 8th is International Women's Day, and we will have a major event in Washington, D.C. Uh, we will also have the Commission on Status of Women events that Dining for Women will participate in in New York City, which is also March 9th onwards. Uh, this is all the information I have right now, but do check our website. Look under the tab, join us and look at events and we will post information as soon as we have it. Uh, meanwhile, Happy New Year, everybody, and we will see you next month. Bye-bye.